We're here with Barbara Enright. Barbara, you've been inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame, and you have one of the most enviable poker tournament records in history. What's the first thing you do when you first take a seat in a tournament? Well, the first thing I do is try to analyze the table and see who I know and uh, how the, how I'm going to play against them. And and then I also try to analyze my own play, which a lot of people don't do. They sit down at the table and they think, oh, what a bunch of donkeys. And everybody else might be thinking the same thing about them, that they're the donkey. So you don't want to be that donkey. You want to you want your opponents to fear you. And to do that, you can't let them run over you. You have to run over them. So what I try to do is I try to win the first hand I play so I have chips to manipulate the rest of the table. i got to get chips first. I try to play very tight in the beginning until I get double up and then quadruple up, and then I can run over the table, and then they'll fear me. So you're saying that it's very important once you've gathered chips, and you always try to do that in the beginning. It may take some time, so you need some patience. But once you've done that, you use these chips to intimidate your opponents. Exactly. I use my chips as a hammer and my opponents as nails. I like that. That's that's very good. But you're saying when you first sit down, Barbara, what you do is you look around you and maybe you've seen some of these players play before and those ones then you have an idea how they play and otherwise you're you're going to study them. And you call you say it's not a good idea to, to just look at all your opponents as donkeys because perhaps they're dangerous. Exactly, exactly, Mike. Um sometimes an opponent sees me as a, as a loose player because I'll start getting aggressive when I have a lot of chips and I will play more hands and they'll try to check raise me which they used to do a lot and now I know what they think of me so I'm going to change my play so I'm not going to let them check raise me I'm going to just check right behind them if I don't have anything because I'm not going to give them that opportunity so not only do you try to study your opponents or remember what you've learned about them in the past, but you are aware that they have some perceptions about you. Exactly, exactly. And the ones that, well, sometimes I can tell by just the remarks they make at the table, like uh, they'll check to me and and I'll I'll check, uh, um, oh, you didn't bet that? Well, I know these are the kind of people that are expecting me to bet, so I will bet when I have something. In fact, I'll value bet when I have something. Uh, just so they'll call me with their ace high or their their two fours if they're expecting me to bet if they if they think I'm a loose player that'll bet anything so this but, is all part of setting your stage which has been so successful for you for your future plays in the tournament then that's right and that's you do right. it from the very get go that's 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 uh, very interesting i think uh most uh, world class players actually do start setting the stage from the very beginning as you do. You know, they're, they're not just uh, one-by tournaments, but they're also rebuy tournaments. I was curious to know what you think about rebuy tournaments. Well, personally, Mike, I don't like rebuys that much, but sometimes they're worth playing because sometimes there's a huge guarantee for a small buy-in, and uh, it's just worth it. There's a good overlay, so I think uh, if you... If you feel there's enough players and enough money in the prize pool that, say, the tournament is $100 with a rebuy and there's a 100000 guarantee, if you think getting to the top money is worth 200 or 300 then I, I would say rebuy. But I wouldn't rebuy late in the tournament. I would do my rebuy as soon as I sit down. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense because when you rebuy late in the tournament, you're still rebuying for the same amount that it costs about to buy in with, and now there's so many chips out there that it really doesn't make a great deal of difference. Exactly. It's like you're at the bottom of the mountain and everybody else is on top, and you've got to try to catch up to them. 
and it, 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 it's tough. I mean, you can do it, and it happens sometimes, but it's tough. But I would rather have the advantage in the beginning. For example, there's a tournament that I play on the Internet for, 